Wait, let's talk about how the food can be cleaner. Hold on. <sighs> okay, that's a lot better. Alright guys, today we're going to talk about COVID-19 and the flu season. Let's get into it. Before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button below, hit like, and share this with all your family and friends. Don't forget to check out my blog, bowtiehealth.org, and make sure you read up on what's happening. So today we're going to talk about influenza and the COVID-19 pandemic and how they interact with one another and what you should know. So first off, uh, we've reached over 5 million cases in the U.S., um, just mind-boggling. Uh, and sadly, we've lost almost 165,000 people uh, to this pandemic. Um, those are largely unnecessary deaths. Um, we could have done better. We should have done better. Unfortunately, that's all in the past. We can point fingers. We can play the blame game. We can play politics. Um, but there's no need to do that. We just need to look ahead and see what we can do from here on out. Um, we want to think about each other, not just ourselves. That's how we succeed in this. So first, we need to talk about what the flu season could look like uh, during a pandemic. Um, you know, since the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918, um, we've never seen anything like this. This is a once in a century, um, this, this is once in a century pandemic. Um, luckily, we have modern medicine, modern science, um, and uh, the world scientific community and research community looking into this. Um, so we're fortunate. We have such incredible technological and research advancements that you know things can happen quickly it's unheard of that a vaccine is in phase three clinical trials this quickly and yes it is being done safely um, so you know why why should we care about this so normally the influenza virus will spread around the world it starts in you know it, the continent of asia and makes its way over um, and it evolves and um, we guess as to what strains are going to hit us. Some years are worse than others. And, um, you know, it can claim anywhere from 40,000 to 65,000 plus um, lives. Um, and millions of people are typically infected with this. Now, it could be different this year. It could absolutely be different this year because the entire world's been on lockdown for just about six months now. And because of that, we don't have a lot of people coming in and out of this country from overseas that can potentially transmit the virus from there to here. Also, everyone, almost everyone in the entire world is practicing good public health measures and infection control. You know, everyone's wearing face coverings and washing their hands and physically distancing and disinfecting and using good respiratory etiquette. So because of this, we may not have a horrible flu season. Sadly, our economy is being pushed to reopen and other countries are doing better, so they're opening up. We're not allowed to travel there, but they might be able to travel here. I don't know why they would want to, um, but I'm sure some people will. And so there is a possibility that influenza could come here and we could get double whammied. We could have COVID-19 claiming lies and influenza making that dramatically worse. Now, why is this a big problem? You know, just superficially, yeah, obviously, more people will be infected, more people are sick, more people die. Um, what makes it f really a big problem for us in medicine is it's hard to tease out the two. If I had two people walk into my office and ask me, is it flu or COVID? Honestly, I don't know. Um, unless they've had ex extremely direct exposures and I can confidently say, oh, you know, you haven't been out of your house in weeks, but then your caretaker came and they were tested positive for COVID-19, then it's probably COVID-19. But if you come in coughing, shortness of breath, chest congestion, fever, body aches, feeling tired, headache, I don't know if that's flu. I don't know if that's COVID-19. I don't know if it's some other viral illness that's kind of come around during flu season. There's plenty of them. And so that's what worries us. We don't really know. And here's the downside. Yeah, we have testing for all of these things, but they're not 100% accurate. If I swab someone's nose for the flu, it's not that great. It's only 70% or so effective. Um, and, and if it's negative, it may not mean that they don't have the flu. If it's positive, yeah, that's great. I can treat you with Tamiflu. You know, I know what to look out for. I know what to expect and what your risks are because we know what the influenza virus does to the human body. If it's negative, 
It could still be flu. It could still be COVID-19. We don't know. Now, if you get a COVID test, right now, testing is horrible. It sucks. You can get your results back in 5, 7, 10, 14 days. That's unacceptable. If it's, if it's taking five days or longer, it's pointless. You've already had other exposures, so you've, you've, you've exposed other people by then. And so it's not great. It also has a lot of false negatives if you're doing the PCR test. So you might get a negative test result, but you could still have COVID. It may not be late enough, and the test may not have detected enough of its RNA to show that you're infected. If it's an antibody test, it could be positive, but you may not have COVID. And so then we go down a whole other line of questioning and think it's COVID, and we could have treated you with Tamiflu if it was influenza. So this is going to be a grab bag. We're not going to know what the heck we're dealing with. It's going to be really hard to tease that out. And so even though we have a lot of testing for it, it's going to make it really tricky. Now, why else is this a problem? Well, if you think about it, if we already have places in Texas, Arizona, Florida, California, and, you know, in previous areas where they were really hard hit, Massachusetts, New York, um, then you're going to see some pretty bad hospitalization rates. Um, you're going to see hospitals overwhelmed, right? That's why we wanted to flatten the curve. That's why everything locked down is so that the infection rate would slow down. It's not going to disappear, but it's going to slow down. And so when you do that, instead of having a thousand people sick at once and going to the emergency room, you're going to have 10, 15, 20. That's more manageable. We can deal with that in our hospitals. But if you have COVID that's out of control, which it is in most places, and if you have influenza that starts to get out of control, we're screwed. Our hospital is going to be overrun, and that's not going to look pretty. You're going to go into the hospital, it's going to be super strained, and we're going to have to use crisis protocols and triage medicine. And what that means is, is if you're too far gone, we don't deal with you. We're going to leave that older, really sick person who doesn't have a good chance of surviving in the bed to die because we know we can save you, who's 30-something years old, fairly healthy, with a likelihood that you're going to recover from this. That sucks. I can tell you as a provider, I hope I never have to make that decision. I've had to help people with end-of-life decisions and talking about their risks and, and kind of what the different options are. It's not pretty. I couldn't imagine knowingly let someone die when I might be able to do something for them, but because we're so overwhelmed, I can't. I don't want to do with that. I know no other healthcare professional who ever wants to be put in that situation. So that's why this is so important. So what can you do to help stop that potential crisis? So first and foremost, get your flu shot. I can't stress that enough. A lot of people don't believe in it. I have friends who are nurses who don't believe in it. And it, when I ask them why, they don't give me a great answer. They just say, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't think it really does much. That's not, that's not the truth. We have science. We have research. Yes, it's not the best vaccine. It's not 100%. No vaccine is. However, something is better than nothing. It's a guessing game for us. We get strains of influenza that travel from overseas, and it evolves by the time it gets here. We don't know exactly what it's going to evolve into. We don't know what strains are going to be the most prevalent. We guess based on our scientific evidence, and it is the best educated guess in medicine and science that we can possibly make to help protect millions of people around the world. And that's what we do. So even if it's 22% effective one year, or 57% effective, or 78% effective, who cares? It's better than nothing. I'd rather wear a bulletproof vest that stops at my nipples than have nothing at all. And so that's the key, is we need people to be protected. So please, get your flu shot. It does not cause the flu. I can promise you, it is impossible to get the flu from the flu vaccine. It, it's scientifically impossible. I can promise you that. Yeah, if you get sick after you get your flu shot, it could be your immune system reacting and creating antibodies. Or you might have caught something, and while you're making those antibodies, your immune system's preoccupied, and unfortunately, you caught a viral illness. It happens, but it's likely not to be anything serious. Also, on top of that, it's so important that you get your flu shot because it can reduce the transmission to other people who have a dangerous outcome if they get the flu. Your 
your grandmother, your uncles, your aunts, your, you know, little nephew who might have cancer or some autoimmune condition. You know, you got to think about other people. It's protective. And so the more you have in your tool belt, the more prepared you're going to be. And so that goes for the flu vaccine. If you can get the flu vaccine, get it. It will protect you and others around you. It may not be great. It may not offer much, but it's something. Now, other things you can do, keep doing what you're doing. You know, if you don't need to go out in public, don't go out in public. Physically distance. Wear your mask. Wear your, you know, your, your face covering. Uh, make sure that when you do go out, you physically distance. You good, good uh, respiratory etiquette. Cough into your arm. You know, sneeze into a tissue. Wash your hands constantly. You know, these are the things that, yes, we're doing for a pandemic, but in medicine, we've been trying to preach this for decades to prevent influenza outbreaks and other diseases. You know, this is something that I think we can really take a good control of. So please keep these infection control measures going. Once the pandemic ends, it will end eventually. Yes, Donald Trump is right about something. It could be a couple of years from now, but it will end. We shouldn't really stop doing all these things. You know, we don't have to be completely animal retentive about it, but we should continue good hand hygiene, resp respiratory etiquette, things like that. So please keep following those measures because they will help. Now, what do I think the flu season could look like? Who knows? You know, it, we could be protected by the fact that no one's traveling, that we're practicing good infection uh, control measures and public health measures. I don't know. But what I do know is we can do our best to prepare ourselves for what could possibly come next. And so I beg of you, stay healthy, get your exercise, eat healthy, sleep better, you know, try and reduce your stress levels. I know it's easier said than done now more than ever, but we need to make sure we take all precautions to optimize our health. And there's so many ways to do that. Um, but I will say this and say this again. Get your flu shot. I promise you it'll offer you some protection and it will protect others around you. You know, we need to start thinking about other people and stop being selfish. You see all these clips of Karens and Kevins, or whatever you want to call them, of walking into public places without a mask and defying and saying, I have a medical exemption. I, it's my right. You can't do this. It's against the law. There's no law saying I need to wear a mask. There is no law saying you need to wear a mask. However, there are private companies that can refuse your service um, because it is their policy for you to wear a mask. You know, stop being selfish. That's all I ask. Think of the people around you. It doesn't matter what your rights are. You know, you wear seat belts. You obey speed limits. Most people. Um, you stop at red lights. Most people. You can't smoke in public places. We do these things for a reason because it protects the general public. And we are a danger to not only ourselves if we don't take these precautions seriously. We're a danger to other people. You know, gone are the days of thinking about your neighbor. You know, yes, there is still good, you know, out there. And, you know, people are, I like to believe, generally positive, kind, and good people. However, this has brought out an ugly side of the world, uh, mostly America. And we need to start thinking about our, our fellow humans. doesn't matter if you believe in your liberties are taking away or your conspiracy theories are running rampant, if you're Republican, if you're, you know, Democrat, if you're liberal, if you're right-wing, um, it doesn't matter what you are. You're human first and foremost. So think of your fellow humans. That's all I ask of you. So with that being said, I'm Matt the Bowtie Guy. Stay well, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.